So far in this module, we've looked at how coal and minerals are found and how they're mined. In this topic, we will look at the next step in the process, that is upgrading the mined material to increase the concentration of the valuable component before it is then transported to the customer. The process of upgrading the concentration of the valuable product in a mined material is variously described as beneficiation, washing, cleaning, preparation or processing. In this topic, we focus on the beneficiation of coal. In the next topic, we will look at the processing of metalliferous ores. The purpose of beneficiation of coal is to reduce the concentration of unwanted material, or gang, which in the coal industry is referred to as mineral matter or ash. This is so as to reduce transport costs, why pay freight costs for worthless rock, and increase the calorific value. The run of mine feed to a coal preparation plant consists of many lumps of pure coal, some lumps of pure mineral matter or gang, and some composite or so-called middling particles which consist of some coal and bands of mineral matter. Because most coal breaks up readily during mining, it requires only minor crushing to break it down to a manageable size for handling with a top size of around 5 to 10 centimetres. Hence, coal plants don't require multiple stages of crushing and grinding to grind the coal down to a fine powder as is done with most mineral processing. Instead, coal plants screen and classify the run of mine feed into a series of size fractions referred to as coarse, small, fine and ultrafine. This series of figures shows that there are many different steps in the processes that follow. First, each of the size fractions is treated in parallel using cleaning methods that work best for that particular size fraction. The large and small fractions can be beneficiated using dense medium processes. The fine size is treated in various ways, including spirals and reflux classifiers. The ultrafine fraction, if there is sufficient valuable material to justify processing, is usually treated using flotation. We will talk more about dense medium processes in a moment and flotation in the next topic. Afterwards, the products need to be dewatered before shipping to the customer. The tailings or reject solids also need to be dewatered before they too are disposed of. The water recovered in the dewatering step is reused wherever possible. Coal and gang minerals can only be separated on the basis of some difference in their basic physical properties, such as their colour, their density or their surface chemistry. In optical or X-ray separation techniques, the fact that coal is black and that most of the gang rocks are light coloured is used as a discriminating characteristic. When a stream of particles is passed along and scanned using X-ray or optical light and the colour difference is detected, the lighter colour gang particles can be blasted from the stream using a directed jet of air. Density or gravity-based separation techniques utilise the fact that coal has a density of about 1.2 times that of water, but the common gang rock minerals have a density of between 2.4 and 2.6 times that of water. And so this difference in density can be used in gravity separation techniques. Flotation is a technique that uses differences in a particle surface chemistry. It works particularly well on the ultrafine fraction of coal, but we'll talk about this in the next topic with metalliferous ores. There are a wide variety of industrial processes that seek to separate particles on the basis of differences in their density. For two particles of the same size, a particle with higher density will settle faster than a particle with lower density. Another way to separate coal from its gang minerals is to use dense medium separation. The principle of dense medium separation relies on the fact that coal particles have a density of around 1.2 times that of water, but the gang that it's associated with has a density of around 2.6 times that of water. So what that means is if we can find a fluid with a density somewhere between 1.2 and 2.6 times that of water, and if we can then suspend coal and gang particles in that fluid, the coal particles at 1.2 times that of water will float to the surface, and the gang particles at 2.6 times that of water will sink to the bottom. Such fluids exist, but they are expensive. The mining industry has come up with a novel way of creating a fluid of the required density by employing a suspension of fine magnetite particles in water. The jar beside me contains a layer of fine magnetite particles, 
around 100 microns in size, sitting at the bottom of a layer of water. If you look inside the jar, you will actually see that there are two dice sitting on the surface of the magnetite. These two dice, in fact, have a density about the same as coal, about 1.2 times that of water, which is why they've sunk to the bottom of the layer of water. Why have they used dice? Well, I could put two particles of coal in there, but because coal particles are black, they'd be very hard to see amongst the black magnetite. So let's imagine for this experiment that the dice are particles of coal. So if they take the jar and shake it up to form a suspension with the fine magnetite particles, the suspension will have a density of about 1.9 times that of water. That means that the dice or the coal with a density of 1.2 times that of water will float on the top and any gang minerals with a density of 2.6 times that of water would sink to the bottom. Let's give the jar a shake and see what happens. Now we can see the dice are sitting at the surface of the magnetite suspension. In this topic, I introduced you to the purpose and philosophy of coal beneficiation. There are many more clever and complex processes to separate coal from its gang, and probably the most important of those is that of flotation. But we'll talk about that in the next topic when we look at the way we separate metal ores from their gang.